Wood is used to make all kinds of things. Shelters, tools of all sorts. It is imperative to be able to work and shape wood. And today we have all kinds of tools that enable us to make things out of wood. Uh, we have axes, we have chisels, drills, wedges, saws, draw knives, all kinds of tools that enable us to build from wood. But what would people in the ancient world use to shape wood? Obviously there's a variety of stone tools, axes and adzes that work well in shaping wood. Several years ago I was at a conference, a REARC conference in Colonial Williamsburg, and a colleague friend named Dietrich Pamstra from the Netherlands was there, and he was demoing how to build a bow using no stone tools. He literally created a bow from standing tree to shooting bow in one day with wood, bone, antler, and tooth-based tools. And Dietrich had a small little adz that looked a lot like this. He had built it based upon a Mesolithic old world tool and it's basically an antler with a wooden handle through a drilled hole. The antler becomes a socket in which a tooth was inserted. And Dietrich used a, a bore incisor. And with that, he was able to shape the wood, create notches, and then split along the grain uh, with antler and bone wedges. So this got me thinking, shaping wood would be critical. Critical to life long ago. What would ancient peoples in North America potentially be using to shape wood? We don't have wild boar, or at least we don't have native indigenous wild boar. But we have the beaver, and archaeologists find beaver teeth in the archaeological record. Could these teeth be used in a similar way, in a similar fashion? Could a beaver incisor be inserted into an antler socket and used to create wooden tools? Could it be used to shape wood for woodworking? So that's the point of today's project. Right, to explore this idea that the beaver incisor could be used as a woodworking tool, as a woodworking implement. Today we're going to go meet with a trapper. Uh, this gentleman has been trapping beaver all winter. I'm, I've heard he's been quite successful. And he's open to letting us pick through the carcass pile. What I'm after are the teeth. I would like to procure as many fresh beaver teeth as possible. Why fresh beaver teeth? Well, I, you know, was under the assumption that the beaver, like most mammals, had hard, durable teeth. Uh, obviously, the beaver is capable of chewing down trees. It must have hard, durable teeth. So I purchased some off the internet. I got several, maybe half dozen lower teeth, half dozen upper teeth. The uppers are more curved than the lowers. I then use these uh, to make different sorts of woodworking tools, to make an adz, to make uh, a gouge. And what I found was that the teeth were actually weak and friable, which came as quite a surprise so friable that some were on my workbench at school came back a day or two later and they had disintegrated had broken into several pieces this was striking i thought perhaps a student had done it accidentally i was a bit annoyed at least i could do is fess up to breaking something uh but i blew it off continued to work with the the remaining teeth hafted one in an antler i'm just gonna get a sense of how it works. This is it. Broke already. One, one strike and that tooth is done. So why is that? Why are they falling to pieces? So I did some googling and what I determined was that the beaver, the incisors, 
have a membrane running through the tooth and that over time as the membrane dries out the tooth actually becomes brittle who knew so I spent the last couple of weeks trying to find a source of fresh beaver teeth. I myself am not a trapper, but I got lucky in that here in the North Country, it's beaver trapping time. So today we're going to go out and meet up with a trapper down the road, 45 minutes away. And he's been quite successful, I'm told, in trapping beaver this winter. And so we're going to pick through his carcass pile and see if we can't find ourselves some fresh beaver teeth. So we're out here. This is a trapper's pile where beaver and otter and muskrat are all discarded after the pelts have been taken. Uh, so I was able to take the teeth, fresh teeth from some of these guys. You can see the fresh teeth here. I cut right about here and was able to remove the, the lower jaw. But I've also been picking through some of the ones from years past. And you can see how the teeth just pull right out. A little bit of wiggling and they pull right out. The question is, are these too old? Are they brittle? So that's why we'll compare these to the fresh ones. But this place is just littered with bone. There is bone everywhere. Beaver skulls everywhere. Here I'm taking out the, the upper incisors in a very similar way putting the knife, good sturdy knife, in between the two front teeth and batoning, splitting the skull. I'm actually finding that the incisor is coming out relatively easily compared to the lower jaw. have it. There's the front incisor. Relatively clean without a lot of bone or in this case any bone or ligaments, fleshy bits clinging to it. Uh, so now we're just interested in seeing whether or not the tooth holds up. It's probably maybe three days out of the out of the beaver skull. So let's see, let's see how she does. You see this? Yeah. Not really putting much. Yeah. I'm not really putting much pressure into it, just letting the weight of the tool do the work. And she's digging in there. This is a piece of bog birch. Not the ter you know, the, it's not a terribly hard wood, but it is a hard wood. The tooth is holding up. Uh, I'll take some stills or zoom in on it with another camera. But yeah, this is holding up. You can really see how the beaver is able to chew through hard, hard trees. I mean, this is just incredible. It really is.
So it's late May, probably about a month after extracting the incisors from the beaver skulls. We looked at how the incisor worked well when chopping through, splitting through that uh, birch sapling, small tree. Today we're out with a tougher wood, a harder wood. This is a piece of maple that came down in a storm not too long ago. And <clears throat> we're gonna test out the, the little ads. Has the tooth dried out significantly, thus causing it to break? Is this wood harder than the birch and therefore more likely to resist the chipping of the beaver incisor? working. The tooth is still holding up. I'm just thinking if you were in a camp kind of environment and you needed to make notches this would be an excellent tool, good for carving wood. Good for a variety of bushcraft kinds of needs. <clears throat> the maple is green. But it's still a lot harder than that birch was. There might be a slight chip out of the tip of the incisor. Nothing significant. There you have it, folks. <clears throat> it really reminds me of a beaver fallen tree. It's great. Wonderful little tool. Clearly it hasn't dried out to the point where it's no longer useful. It's been at least a month been sitting in room temperature environments, uh, hard maple, and a tough little tool. So what did we learn? I'd say we learned that yes, beaver teeth work wonderfully for shaping wood. And that's rather obvious, that's a no-brainer, given what we know about the beaver. But this tool is wonderful, it's a remarkable little tool. A beaver incisor hafted into an antler uh, socket works wonderfully. Now whether or not ancient peoples in this part of the world created antler sockets that look this way or not, is certainly a valid question. It's up in the air. Yeah, fine tool, works well. It'll be interesting to repeatedly use this tool over months, over the years, to see how long the shelf life of the beaver teeth lasts. Obviously, at some point, they're gonna become too dry, too brittle to actually function. But how long is that? This sucker's been in use for over a month now and it's still working great. So, we shall see. Thanks for stopping in and 
We'll see you next time.